Hello info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a discovery of what seems to be the most volcanically active exoplanet we've seen anywhere. An unusual terrestrial exoplanet that was actually discovered a few years back, but that has now been observed with the James Webb Space Telescope, which was able to detect volcanic emissions from around the planet, while also discovering something else somewhat unusual about the planet, and so it's actually worth discussing today. And so let's talk about this planet in a system of L9859 and discuss why this is actually kind of exciting. But I guess first of all, so technically this is not the first time different types of volcanic activity has been detected outside of planet Earth. Now obviously the most famous volcanic object is Jupiter's moon Io, that by the way we actually recently discussed because it was able to produce some of the most spectacular volcanic eruptions in the entire solar system, but when it comes to looking at exoplanets, Due to distances, this becomes a little bit more complicated. Because here we cannot observe these eruptions visually, but we can observe emissions of gas around these planets by studying the starlight as it passes through some of these molecules. But I guess the question is, why? Why even bother with these volcanic planets? Well, it's mostly in regards to what's known as red dwarfs, or M-type stars, which basically represent the most common types of stars in the entire galaxy. But on top of being common, Red dwarfs also possess the most amount of terrestrial planets we've ever seen anywhere. For example, the famous TRAPPIST-1 system contains seven terrestrial planets, and at least three of them seem to be in the habitable zone of the star. But a lot of these stars are also extremely active and tend to produce a lot of flares, and so quite a lot of previous studies determined that it might be impossible for many of these planets to maintain atmospheres, like at all. All of them might be completely barren, and thus have no chance for liquid water and obviously life. As a matter of fact, two of the seven planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system have already been discovered to potentially have nothing. And so trying to assess the prevalence of atmospheres around M-type stars or red dwarfs is actually one of the biggest priorities in a lot of different exoplanetary research. Or just to rephrase this, can rocky planets around red dwarfs actually have atmospheres? And well, additionally, some other studies actually propose that there might be a way, and that way is through, as you probably guessed, volcanism. Even though a star might strip initial atmosphere, if a certain planet has a lot of volcanism on its surface, this might actually provide it with just enough resources to continuously replenish its atmosphere. In other words, this is maybe one way for many of these planets to have permanent atmospheres, even though these planets might not be super hospitable. And it just so happens that back in 2021, one such planet was proposed to be the perfect candidate to study all of this. This is a system known as L9859, and here several planets have already been confirmed, as you can see from this NASA simulation. But specifically, the closest planet, Planet B, seems to actually be smaller than planet Earth, and is even less massive at approximately half the mass of Venus. And this is also not very far, approximately 35 light years away from us. So this is almost definitively a terrestrial planet. Moreover, this is a multi-planetary system with three confirmed and two unconfirmed planets, with actually one of them in the habitable zone. But it's really the smallest planet that seems to be of the most interest. And back in 2021, this was officially one of the smallest planets ever discovered, until the discovery of something even smaller we've discussed in one of the previous videos. And it was also one of the lowest in mass planets as well, not the least massive, but definitely in top three. And here the planet was orbiting very close to the star, it took approximately 2.2 days per orbit, so it was actually very easy to observe. But obviously this also made the planet pretty hot. Here it was receiving approximately 20 times more energy than planet Earth, and was thus estimated to be at least 330 degrees Celsius, 620 Fahrenheit. But then approximately a year after its discovery, in 2022, the initial atmospheric studies unfortunately discovered nothing, as in there were basically no emissions or nothing that was easily visible, but this was before the James Webb. In this case, it was from this study where the scientists used Hubble Space Telescope. But it did not mean that it had no atmosphere. As a matter of fact, there were two possible solutions. One is that it was barren, but the other solution was that it could have had an extremely hazy, almost opaque atmosphere, kind of similar to Venus, basically containing a lot of haze in the high altitudes, which blocked most of the light. And because previous studies predicted volcanism here, and even predicted potential atmospheres, scientists wanted to look at this planet again using the James Webb, mostly because it's able to see so much more. Which is why we get this study, the study by Aaron Bello Arouf and his team. And here the study was very simple, basically observing several transits, and then trying to see if the spectrum coming from the star changed as a result of certain molecules blocking the starlight. And well here, unlike the Hubble, 
something was indeed discovered. Here, the transmission spectroscopy, because it was so much more accurate than the Hubble Space Telescope, revealed an almost definitive presence of sulfur dioxide. That's by the way what we usually see around Io as well. But here the amount detected was actually really huge. Because the evidence suggested a lot of sulfur dioxide, it implied volcanic activity at least 8 times more active than Jupiter's Io. So this planet might actually really look sort of like this. And the reason they believe this is from volcanism and not from something else is really because when trying to calculate how likely is this planet to maintain its atmosphere, the chance for that is pretty low. Because in this case the planet orbits so close to a red dwarf, just like with Mercury, it would extremely likely strip everything from the surface, only leaving trace amounts of materials around the planet. But in this case, due to the amount of sulfur dioxide, it suggested that something was probably replenishing it actively. Because if it was not being replenished, it should disappear within approximately 10 million years. In this case though, this is a much older star system, so the fact that we're seeing sulfur dioxide implies activity on the surface. And so in essence, just like predicted, this indeed seems to be the most volcanic planet we've detected so far, and indeed seems to suggest that it's possible for planets to actively replenish their own atmospheres through volcanic processes. Although here we're just talking about planets orbiting red dwarfs. And one of the reasons this seems to be possible is really because of its orbit. Here, because this planet has a relatively circular orbit, and because it has so many neighbors, it very likely experiences a lot of tidal heating, which is really the same mechanism that causes Io to be volcanic as well. And so because of the tidal heating, or because of these gravitational forces acting on the planet's mantle, and basically causing it to move back and forth, it then causes huge amount of volcanism, which is unlikely to stop anytime soon. And interestingly, something very similar was actually discovered around a different planet, the one you can learn about in one of the previous videos in the description, the planet LP79118, that was also very similar in size to this planet, and based on gravitational interactions, and thus assumed to be potentially volcanic too. And so this tidal interaction might be one of the ways for many of these planets to continuously replenish their own atmospheres, thus maybe even creating somewhat hospitable conditions for some kind of life. And though it's obviously still possible that maybe this signal came from something else, and maybe this planet is actually still barren, as originally observed by the Hubble Space Telescope, obviously until future observations we're not going to know for sure. Nevertheless, right now this does seem to be the most volcanically active planet ever seen, which would basically suggest an enormous subsurface magma ocean, very likely representing at least 60 to maybe even 90% of the entire volume, responsible for all of these volcanoes. But more importantly, the study also calculates that it's quite possible for this planet to continuously replenish a lot of different gases and not just sulfur dioxide. As a matter of fact, depending on the composition, this planet could easily contain a relatively hospitable atmosphere, although obviously in this case it would be maybe just a little bit too hot. But a similar planet at a slightly farther away distance that still has volcanism on its surface does actually have a pretty high chance to maybe even be habitable long term. And so when it comes to exoplanetary discoveries, this one is actually pretty important. But until future studies and future observations, we're not going to know for sure. And so until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.